guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speedrunning video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video, I'm going to be building it in the world of Granite Falls, Granite Falls, to be honest with you, never know how you say the name of this world, but it's the book that we got from the Outdoor Retreat game pack and I'm going to be building a family vacation log cabin. So this house ends up having four bedrooms and four bathrooms and it's built on a 30 by 20 lot. I say house, I meant log cabin vacation home thing. It's just because it's second nature at this point for me to say house because I don't build as many vacation homes as what I do houses but either way i was quite surprised if i'm being honest with you the amount of stuff that i managed to fit on the inside of this house because it's built on a 30 by 20 lot but there ends up being the four bedrooms and then an extra activity room which if you wanted to you can make it into an extra bedroom so it could be five bedrooms within this house but then as well as that there's also quite a nice size utility room or a laundry space it's just i feel like it's quite deceiving like if i was to look at this from like a street view I wouldn't think this ends up having as many bedrooms and bathrooms as what it does on the inside, but it was just it was just the way the floor plan worked out. But this week, I just basically wanted to come into my game and just build something really cosy and really wholesome because the temperature has dropped in the UK. And I find whenever the temperature changes or whenever it gets a little bit chillier or a little bit warmer, it kind of inspires my builds. And so where it is getting a little bit colder, I wanted to build something cosy. And so I thought, why not build a log cabin in the world of Granite Falls? And that is exactly what I did. So I hope you guys like it. But getting on and talking a little bit more about the house and the building process for it. So as you can see, the main structure of the build has already come together. I've already done all the wallpapering, already done like the roof colouring. I did actually use two different roof swatches in different areas of the build just because I wanted it to feel a little bit more rustic and I feel like maybe this was like an old cabin and people have since come here and like renovated it and maybe it's some of the old roof still remains and so over the porch areas I tried to use like a different colour swatch. To me it just felt a little bit more woodlandy even though I don't think that's a word but it just felt a little bit more cabiny to me oh, that's also not a word but I do want to mention that when I was building this I was looking at a picture that I found on Pinterest I'll find the picture and I'll pop it up on the screen now so you can have a little look now I didn't want to exactly recreate the picture I just wanted to try and use it as like a starting point like a starting place for the build itself which is something that I find really useful if you ever really stuck on what you want to build or how to build something pop onto pinterest go onto google images just search for a house you don't even have to recreate it as such you can kind of use it as your starting point i think for the most part this house does end up looking quite similar to the reference photo or kind of like the inspiration photo that i was looking at but there was one difference that i did at the very front of the build which you might have noticed from the thumbnail and it was there is an absolutely massive window <laughs> at the front of the build looking right on in into the log cabin now this is something that i find is so common in a lot of different lake houses log cabins all of those pictures that i found on pinterest that are kind of like log cabiny i find that this is something that they all have in common it's kind of like a similarity i think the the thought process behind it is maybe where you're building in kind of like a rural place you want to have really nice views looking onto the mountains and lakes and just woodlands and so that's probably why a lot of these different log cabins that i see on pinterest have this really big window but it's something that i wanted to do in this build and i have done it before in the past i haven't done it in a while but this time round, I decided to do it in a completely different method to the methods that I've previously done. And let me tell you, the method that I use in this video, 10 times easier than the methods that I previously used to kind of like create this really big window effect. Because normally when you're trying to put a window into a roof or kind of like the roof line itself, you can't do it because we don't really have any triangular windows in the game. I think we might have two or three from like eco lifestyle or some of them expansion packs but the window style will definitely not work for this house and so normally it's not something that you can do but there is a way that you can do it if you have the tool mod installed which if you are playing on console unfortunately you can't download the tool mod but you can still download this build if you are playing on console and the the kind of like the big i was about to say the tower it's not a tower whatsoever but the big the big tall window will still be there it will still transfer over into the gallery just unfortunately you can't try and recreate it if you are on console but basically before in the past when i've done it i'll put the windows into the roof and then you'll notice that there's kind of like this rugged edge for where the windows don't kind of line up they don't go all the way up to the top so normally whenever you do this you've got to try and find something to cover up that edge now before in the past when i've done this i've tended to go for this kind of like little slab that we've got from the spa day game pack and it's this really small object it's very fiddly luckily it doesn't clip to anything so it is super easy to try and manipulate but before i've used this tiny little object and i've made it so many different versions of the size that i want and the rotation that i want it to be at and then i individually go around and then place this slab kind of like in 
onto the rug to try and cover up this kind of like rugged edge of the window. But this time round, where I was using quite a dark brown wallpaper, which if you're curious where the wallpaper for this section of the house is from, by the way, it is from the Snowy Escape expansion pack. But where I was using this wallpaper, I felt like it really suited this house and it really suited a log cabin and I didn't want to change it. But all the different slabs that we got from Spa Day, they don't really come in a swatch that would kind of like seamlessly blend in to the wallpaper, if that makes any sense. And so I decided I'd use shelves. Honestly, 10 times easier. I don't know why I've not done this before in the past because the shelf that I use is a base game object. It comes in so many different swatches. Previously, if you've been playing The Sims 4 for a while, you might remember this. Previously, the shelf that I use wasn't actually as versatile. It only came in one shelf. And I remember this one day we got this massive update and I say massive update. It was loads of different color swatches added to loads of different items within the game. And one of the things that they added was more color swatches to this shelf because believe it or not, for such a long time in the game, we didn't have like a plain black or a plain white shelf. You only had these different black or white shelves from different expansion packs and they were kind of in like these different style. But either way, this time I just used this plain basic shelf that we got from base game in this brown swatch. It quite, quite nicely matched the wallpaper. It was kind of like a similar tone of color. And then that way I just sized it up, rotated it, so much easier because previously before in the past i've used so many different tiny little slabs and i've rotated them and where i'm using so many and they're so small you've really got to try and get the rotation for every single one of the objects correct and then when you're trying to line it up against the roof itself it's very fiddly and you've got to use the gravity pull feature within the tool mod it can just it can be very tedious but this time around where i was using shelves they're so much bigger, they're so much longer, so you, you use less objects, and then that way you only have to manipulate like four different objects for the actual roof piece itself, because you see how the roof kind of like goes into a triangle, that triangular piece, I think I use like four different shelves, whereas previously before, I've used like 10. It's just so much easier with this method. And so if you are someone that has previously tried to do a similar thing that I've done in builds previously, where I've done the slab method using the Sparde ones, and you can never really seem to get the hang of it, maybe try it out with the shelves because it is just, it's just so much easier. It's more time efficient as well. It took me literally half the time. I still did take quite a while doing it, but it was just because I wanted it to be completely seamless, completely accurate. And so you might notice I did kind of like skip over a little bit of like the plane about to make it completely accurate, but all around, it's just so much more of an easier method. But something else that I do want to mention, which I have mentioned before when I've done this kind of style build or like this kind of style of window in a build is whenever you do want to do this in your game, try and make sure that you have the house and the placement that you want it to be and you also have the height and like the foundation height to where you want it to be because where I've done this before, I very much learnt from my mistakes because where you're playing around with manipulating objects in the game and you're using the tool mod, if you place down the, say say I've placed it down how it is now and I was, I liked the, the way the house looked but then I decided, oh actually, I want to move the house back a little bit or I want to move it over to the side a little bit or I want to raise the foundation. The way that the game works is the objects that I've just then moved onto the window piece will stay at that exact height and then I'll have to basically redo it. So if you do want to do this in your game, make sure you're one, happy with the foundation height that you've got the house at and two, you're happy with the placement of the house. So just make sure you don't move it over left or right or front or back or just because the objects will then stay where you originally moved it and then you'll basically have to redo it over again. But yeah, hopefully that was easy to follow along with. But if you've got any questions, just ask me and I'll, I'll try and reply to them. I, I tried to be as clear as I could with explaining that, but I know sometimes sometimes my explanations can be a bit tricky. But another thing that I did for the ease of this house is I use these wooden planks to try and make it look a little bit more cabin-like. Again, this is something that I see quite often whenever I do try and find like cabin images or cabin houses on either Pinterest or Google or whatnot. I often find that they also have this, this similarity of these like wooden beams going into the eaves and so I wanted this house to feel as realistic and as, as an actual cabin-like as I could possible and so I basically did the exact same thing or at least I tried to and I did a very similar method to what I did for the windows. So I just found this wooden debug base game item. I basically elevated it and then on two of the planks I rotated them each 45 degrees but at like different angles so I think if you're using the tool mod I, I rotated one 45 degrees and then the other one I rotated 315 degrees because it's like backwards in it because like 360 degrees in a circle and whatnot but I basically rotated them so then they'll be completely even with one another and then I plopped one in the middle of it and then it just kind of looks a little bit more like built in a little bit more like a cabin in the woods and I did it at the back of the build as well but you don't see me do it at the back of the build because I felt like you'd already see me do it at three different points within the front of the build because I did this kind of like plank 
thing on three different of the eaves and so I thought it'd be a bit repetitive if I show you every single area that I do it in but I also do do it at the back of the build but now as you can see I've now started moving on and I've started doing a little bit of landscaping and also started doing a little bit more of like object placement so in terms of what I wanted there to be on the exterior of the build my main one thing was I wanted there to be a campfire because whenever I get my sims to come on vacation and they go camping my favorite thing to get my sims to do is sit around the campfire tell stories roast marshmallows sometimes if they've got a guitar in their inventory they can play the guitar and so I wanted that to be the main like activity on the exterior you can see that the way that I've done the landscaping I actually found these rocks that kind of go in like a, a bit of a semicircle motion and so I placed down at two of them like merged them in together to make it look like a full semicircle and then just did some landscaping around it I really tried to make the landscaping for this build to try and blend in with the other landscaping in the rest of the world I didn't want it to stick out like a sore thumb so I basically went through the outdoor tree basically like landscaping menu and found all the different ferns all the different rocks and trees and just tried to place it down to the house that way it doesn't look too out of place i'm not gonna lie to you i do get a little bit worried sometimes when it comes around to landscaping this well because maybe it's just me but normally when it comes around to landscaping i don't tend to go towards purple flowers it's just not one of my go-to colors for landscaping but in the world of granite falls or granite falls however you say it I find that there's so many different purple flowers and shrubs and so when it comes around to doing a build and try and make the landscaping fit in so it doesn't stick out I, I just have a little bit of trouble with it but luckily enough I managed to do the landscaping quite easily I think it fits in you'll have to let me know but I mean I think it works quite nicely and then I just used similar rocks that were in the world of granite falls so they kind of like blend into landscaping and just I tried my best but also, as you can see, the little campfire area, I end up placing down four chairs. Now, I used a mixture of three different chairs. Two of the chairs are from Outdoor Retreat. They're just kind of like the the like blank standard basic ones. And then I used this one chair and there's two different swatches. One of them looks like a little bear cub and then the other one looks like a little frog. And the frog one always reminds me of the froggy chair if you play Animal Crossing always reminds me of the frogger chair and I'm crossing but I placed him around the campfire and I was thinking maybe two of the chairs are for two kids that have come on holiday and then the more like serious more adult chairs the, the basic ones that have no fun colours and maybe for like the parents or something but then also behind the little campfire area I placed down this little red wagon that we got from the little campers kit there's also some like little s'mores decoration upon it there's also like a little barbecue area over there and then you would have noticed I actually furnished the upper deck area just behind that campfire now one thing I placed down onto there which I was a little bit worried that it might not work but surprisingly with a bit of playing about off camera I managed to make it work it was a telescope because annoyingly if you place down a telescope in the game you can't place it down onto decks you can't place it down into air any area that's got a roof because then your sims can't actually look out into the sky the game thinks that where it's now outside your sims can't actually see the stars which realistically if i was to buy a telescope and pop it into my bedroom i can still look out into the sky so it doesn't actually make that much sense but for some reason that's, that, that's how the game works but when i came in and i started placing this house and also taking the screenshots i was actually able to play about with it to make it at a certain angle on the upper deck bit that makes it so your sims can actually interact with it and use the the object to its full extent because i don't know if you noticed at the very start of the video when i actually did that little porch bit i basically did it so there was like a fence piece as the roof and then at some of the other bits of the roof is a normal roof if that makes any sense i thought like that was really confusing but basically i managed to plop the telescope under the area that's technically not covered and it's just got some landscaping above it that way the game still thinks it's outside but it's actually well it still kind of is outside because i mean if i was you i wouldn't stand on that porch if it was to rain because you would probably get soaked but in the game where technically there is no actual roof above it your sims can use the telescope on the porch and you can use it to its full extent which it is really annoying i really wish they would update the telescope because one thing that i would love to do is if we had like a, a kid and they absolutely love space and they had a really big like space related bedroom if you could plop a telescope in their bedroom kind of like looking out the window but unfortunately because of the way the telescope was made you can't really do that and so maybe there's like a mod out there for it or something but either way as well as that on that little like upper deck porch area you wouldn't notice i placed down a little games table your sims can play cards out there or like don't wake the llama and there was another little porch bit kind of like at the back of the house or the back of the cabin that ended up being a bit of a seating area and also a bit of a garden area as well i placed down a few different plants i merged one into the wall to make it look like the actual planters were coming out the wall and then also 
also placed down some planters and I've already come into my game and I've plopped down two little plants. I think they were like herbs or something. To be honest, I actually placed them down because I wanted to play test it to make sure your sims can actually interact with it. But there is already some vegetables or like herbs planted in the planters. So if your sims want to come on holiday and see you some gardening, then they can definitely do that. But anyway, moving on from that. As you can see, I've now moved on into the inside of this house and I've already done kind of like the front entrance way. Now on the inside, I wanted it to feel as cozy and as warm that I could possible. And so you'll notice that I use a lot of different different exterior wallpapers on the inside and then I also use a lot of different like warm neutral colours, lots of different fluffy rugs, there is so many different fireplaces on the inside of this house. I think in the end there ends up being I think three different fireplaces which doesn't sound like a lot but for the actual size of the inside which is again it's so deceiving because you really wouldn't think this has four bedrooms on the inside of this house but there ends up being three fireplaces two of the fireplaces are this fireplace that i've used in this room which are from the snowy escape expansion pack it just works out so perfectly for kind of like a, a warm cabin in the woods because it's very rustic it's very it's very cabiny. I feel like I've used that word so many times in this voiceover. Maybe I haven't, but it's not even a word. I don't think it is anyway. Maybe I just need to find a new word to describe this kind of like log cabin, cozy. Feel. I just wanted it to be wholesome. And the fireplace just made it feel like... I, I can just picture a Sims family sitting around on the sofa, just kind of having a chit chat, maybe having like a cup of hot chocolate or maybe a coffee or a tea or something and just having the fire burning and just, it looks so cozy in that room. But the sofas that I use in the lounge space ended up being the ones that we got from the Desert Lux kit. I think this is only my second time using them sofas because I originally used them when we first got the kit and I built kind of like a modern desert kind of like cliff house in the world of Oasis Springs and I used a lot of the kit in that build because it was kind of like a, a build to showcase a new kit that we got but I haven't really used them that much since and it was kind of like the perfect sofa for that room. I also ended up using the two armchairs that we also got from that kit and then I also just had like a little coffee table in the middle, it had like a, a little tray with some drinks on, also used a little kind of like blossom plant that we got from Snowy Escape which I think is meant to be a cherry blossom or kind of like a, a version of a cherry blossom, but I used it in like this cream color and it just, it blended in with the rest of the house. But when I was filtering it by the modern, what's it called? The modern, like the desert lux kit. <laughs> Honestly, there are so many different kits now. I forget half the name of them. And also I have failed to mention up until this point in the voiceover, but if you're not aware, we're actually getting two new kits next week. We're getting, first of all, an everyday clutter kit, right up my street. We're getting a clutter kit for the game, which I'm so excited for because I have been saying it for the longest time how I'd love to have a clutter stuff pack, a clutter kit. Like I, I think I even said about it before we even got the introductions of kits. I've wanted a clutter pack for so long because I mean, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I love cluttering up spaces. I just love having bits and bobs just absolutely everywhere and just making places just feel really lived in and just that kit is right up my street. And then we're also getting a second kit, which is another build and buy kit, but I think it more so focuses on like furniture pieces and it is called the Pastel Pop Kit. I think off memory. It was actually in collaboration with Plum Bella, which is so exciting and I'm so happy for her. And so we're actually getting two new kits next week. But yeah, anyway, getting back to what I was talking about. But with the Desert Lux kit, when I was filtering by it, I noticed this little shelf, which not gonna lie, I often forget is even a thing in the game. Well, I mean, I say shelf, I think it's under the shelf category in the game. I'm not, it, it's pretty much a side table, but for some reason, for that kit, they decided not to showcase that side table within the side table category. Because you know when you go into like all the different furniture options and you go into like comfort for like beds and sofas and stuff, and then you go into services for counters and tables, I can never seem to find the side table that we got from the Desert Lux kit. I'm assuming it's in the shelving unit or maybe in like the miscellaneous bits and bobs unit. I don't know why that is not in the normal side table unit, but because they didn't put it in that category, I often forget it's even a thing. But when I was filtering by that kit for the lounge space, it popped up and I was thinking, ah, I want to use that because it kind of fits in with the rest of the build. And so you might notice I kind of like plopped it into another room and then I came back to it when I was just doing that little hallway area. The hallway spaces themselves are quiet. I didn't really know what to do with them. So I placed down like a shelving unit in one of them. There's also like a really big, like long, like kind of like a leaning mirror, more fluffy rugs that ends up being like a chess table. And then I think that's pretty much it. But now, as you can see, I've now moved on into the kitchen. I really enjoy the way that I decorated the kitchen in this house. It's very like industrial. It's very woodeny. It's again, very cabin-like. I'm not going to say cabin-y again because 
I feel like if I say it too much, it's just gonna get too much. But in here, you can see that I decided to go for these base game counters in this kind of like dark brown swatch. And then I paired it with this fridge, which is from the Snow Escape expansion pack. And then I also used this little oven, which is from the same expansion. Something that I did in this kitchen, which to be honest, isn't the most out there brilliant idea, but I don't think I've ever done it before. And I really like the look of it. You can see that I've got this kind of like little counter where the sink is, and it's kind of got like a breakfast bar. I end up placing down this little basket that we got from Jungle Adventure, but you can find it in the debug menu. And I place it down next to the sink and instead of just having like a normal soap dispenser next to the sink like I normally do I actually placed down two of them into this little basket it's not a big thing but I was really happy with that I really like the way it looks so I think I might do this in some of my future builds but I also decided to use it these kind of like ceiling quite tall like dangling lights that we got from the same modern Lux kit even though it's quite desert focus that kit I feel like all of the different tones of the woods kind of went well with like all the different wooden tones for like a cabin if that makes any sense I don't know I used a lot of that kit within this build I'm not sure on what packs that I use and more so focused on I would definitely say outdoor retreat the modern or desert lux kit whatever the name of it is and then it probably snowy escape they're probably like the three main key packs that I use in this build but like always I'll have all of the different packs that I've used in the description box down below if you are curious but now now, as you can see I've now moved on into I want to call it the front room because it's at the front of the cabin but it ends up being the dining space now in this room we've got the big tall chimney which actually goes up into the roof and you can see it from the exterior if you look through the windows you can actually see this chimney going through the roof and then out to the outside and then you've got these little chimneys that have the smoke coming out of it it's just basically like a dining room but it was just so cozy and it just looks so warm and inviting and I can just picture sims that sitting here having their meal having a little bit of a chit chat having the log burner fireplace going it just it looks so so cozy in here but i decided to use this table that we got from the get famous expansion pack and then i paired it with these base game chairs i was debating using the snowy escape chairs but i didn't really like the look of the cushion on the on the on the chair itself if that makes any sense i feel like we don't have that many like basic chairs in the game. I don't know if people are going to agree with me on this one because we do have a lot of just plain basic chairs, but we don't have a lot of basic chairs that have got a nice cushion on them that look comfortable, but they're not too modern and too to a particular style, if you get what I mean. But anyway, as you can see, I just finished up that room and now I've moved on into the next room, which is one of the bedrooms. Now, something that I'm doing in this room, and I've also done it, I think, in a lounge space as well, is I try to create kind of like a custom curtain piece because I'm using, again, some curtains that we got from the Desert Lux kit. But the curtains that I'm using are pretty much these curtains and you can kind of like build the curtain yourself because we have the top bit, like the wooden slat, and then we also have the curtain piece. But one thing that I want you to do is I want you to use these kind of like creamy curtains to kind of like match with the rest of the house like I said in the inside it's very neutral it's very like creams and beige and some dark wooden tones but the cream curtains the actual top part of it you might notice was this really light wood didn't really go with the rest of the house and so what I decided to do is whenever I wanted to use these curtains I'd basically just get the individual like top piece for the curtain change the color to a darker wood that kind of matched with the rest of the house it matched the doors and matched the windows and then I sized it up ever so slightly using the tool mod I think I sized it up to 1.1 so it's just a tiny bit bigger than the original one that's on the original curtain and then that way I plopped it over and then it covers the original wood color of the curtain top part if that makes any sense either way as well as that in that room i end up placing down at the bed that we got from the seasons expansion pack now honestly i cannot remember the last time i used that bed i remember i used to use that bed in all of my previous builds and i always used to say and the point still stands it looks so comfortable that bed but i felt like it really fitted in it with a cabin like a log cabin it looks so plush and so comfortable and just i imagine that there's probably loads of blankets and cushions on that bed and so i place it down into that room and then i also place down like a wardrobe a little laundry basket and i think also a mirror as well i think in the end that ends up being at two laundry baskets in this house that ends up being at one in that bedroom downstairs and there's also one on the upstairs level in the bathroom which by the way i have forgotten and also failed to mention how i decorated the rooms within this cabin so there ends up being at two bedrooms that have two double beds or like a, a double bed in each of them so there's two double beds in this house as well as one bedroom that's got a set of bunk beds in and there is also a toddler's room as well which i was 
debating whether I should do a toddler's room or not because my thought process is, well, how comes the kids have got to share a room but the toddler gets their own room? But then I was thinking that eventually, in a few months' time, we are going to be getting the infant update and we're going to be getting a new life stage into The Sims 4. And I feel like it's pretty safe to assume that with this new life stage, we're probably going to be getting some new furniture pieces to go along with it. So maybe like a, a new infant bed or a crib or maybe like a changing station or just more objects related to this kind of like life stage, this infant life stage. And so I think eventually when this update actually drops, I might return back to this build and then update it. So then the toddler room and then becomes a toddler and then infant room. And then that way there's kind of like a bedroom for each one of the life stages within this build somewhere. Because one of the double rooms you could use as like a, a teen's room or like a grandparent's room. Then there's like a, a space for a set of parents. Then there's the bedroom that's got the bunk beds in, which can either be for like two kids or two teens or one kid and one teen. And you can kind of like play around with the different people or like the different sims that visit the slot but then if I was to update the toddler room there's just kind of basically like a room for every single life stage in the game. I also think I might make this build for my save file because I really like the way it turned out and I feel like it would just suit so well with my save so I'm still debating but then if I do do that then it will kind of be like a perfect fit to have kind of like a toddler and infant room so yeah I'm still I'm still on the fence about that one but let me know if you think it should be in my save or not but anyway moving on as you can see I just then quickly did the little activity room downstairs now I could have very easily made that into another bedroom but I was thinking it's probably getting a bit too much with the amount of bedrooms that are in this house and so I thought well as there is no tv downstairs in lounge space it'd be quite nice for your sims to have something else to do that if it's say like a, a stormy windy day it's a bit cold outside your sims don't want to go outside they want to kind of like stay inside and kind of keep themselves entertained on the inside there is no tv so i've got to add some other kind of sorts of interactions that your sims can do and so there ends up being an activity room ends up having a fish tank in there there ends up being a art easel and then also a little computer space as well i placed down a laptop which i think is going to be tied to the build but if you wanted to, you could probably just delete that laptop and then when your sims come on vacation here, they could probably bring their own laptop. I was just thinking because just in case your sims do actually forget to bring their own, then there is one there, but it might increase the amount that your sims actually have to pay to rent out this cabin, which at this current point in time, I do not know how much this cabin is to rent per night or like per day in the game. I uh, will probably go into the gallery and then I'll find out and then I'll probably pop it into the description box down below. So by the time this video goes out, I would have placed it down so you can find out. But anyway, now as you can see, I've now moved on to the upstairs portion of the build and I started off by furnishing this kind of like parents room or maybe like a grandparents room or maybe just like a, a couple's room. Now I actually felt a little bit backwards when it came to doing this room because I realised that I did it in a completely different rotation to what I normally do, my furnishing of rooms, because, and that does sound a little bit weird, but hear me out, if you're familiar with my channel you'll probably know this by now, but for if somehow I managed to get myself into a routine of the way that I furnish each of the spaces. So normally when I move on to the upstairs of any house or vacation home or whatever, I'll normally start off by furnishing either the hallway and then the bathroom or one of the two and then in terms of furnishing each of the rooms I'll normally work up from the youngest life stage and then kind of like work up the timeline so say if there's like a toddler room a kid's room and then a parent's room I'll start with the toddler's room then move on to the child's room and the last room I'll do will normally be the parent's bedroom I've just got myself into this little bit of a, a habit a bit of a routine I don't know how but it, it works and for some reason when I came to doing this house just didn't fancy it so I decided to do the upstairs hallway which I did decide to cut out it was just a little bit too repetitive. It looked quite similar to some of the other hallway spaces in the house. And so I did decide to cut it out. But you can kind of see it as I spin the camera around. Plus I have taken some screenshots of it as well. So if you are interested in seeing how I decorated it, you can see them in the screenshots. But I, I basically did the upstairs layout and the upstairs furnishing a bit backwards to the inside of this house. Also, I did decide to cut out the laundry room, which... I didn't really want to cut out, but I didn't want to make this video any longer than what it needed to be. And if I'm being honest, the laundry room in this cabin ends up being quite similar to some of my recent laundry rooms as well. And so I thought it might be a little bit too repetitive. It's making the video a little bit too long and it didn't really need to be. It made it a little bit too unnecessarily long. And so again, there'll be screenshots of it at the end of the video if you are curious. But you know, I started off by doing kind of like a, a parent's room or a grandparent's bedroom. I d weirdly, I just fancy decorating that room first, which normally I'm always up for doing teenagers rooms or kids rooms or toddler rooms first because I find them personally the more fun. But I just really wanted to 
decorate the parents' room or, or grandparents' bedroom. It could also be a bedroom for like a, a set of teenagers. Maybe you've got two teenagers. Maybe you've got a teenager and maybe their partner. Maybe they're coming on the family vacation. That could be their bedroom. I was thinking in terms of different families you could have vacation here. I do really like the idea of having maybe two families that live in different households. And maybe you've got like your Sims family that maybe consists of, I don't know, a set of parents. Or maybe like a single parent, a kid and then a toddler. And then they're like best mates with another Sims family. And they've also got a kid. Maybe they've got a teen or something. And then they can come on vacation here. And there's kind of like a, a bedroom space for them. Like each of the different Sims. I don't know. I, don't, I just like the idea of your Sims coming on, on holiday with their Sim mates. I just, I like doing that in my own personal gameplay. And so sometimes I will reflect that onto my builds. But anyway, as you can see, I just quickly did the bathroom. And now I've moved on. And I've started doing kind of like this kid's room. Also could be a teen's room. So in here, I just, so I just use these bunk beds that we've got from the dream home decorator game pack and then over here i'm just playing about with these kind of like wardrobe pieces now something that i wanted to point out because i hadn't used them up until this point this was my first build using them you see on the left hand side i've placed down these clothes and kind of like this clothes rail i didn't know them ones aren't actually a wardrobe feature so you can actually find them in the like the closet the wardrobe section of the build and buy but when i came around to place this in this house i noticed my sims couldn't even use them they're just purely decoration so I don't understand why they were placed. Actually, no, I do see the logic of why they were placed in the wardrobe section. But it was something that I thought I'd point out because it was something that I didn't even know. And I kind of like educated myself when I came around to place this in this build. That left hand wardrobe piece doesn't actually work. It's just purely decoration. But the one on the right hand side, them hanging clothes, them ones work. And then obviously the chest of drawers underneath it also works. But in this room, that ends up being like a little drawing table. That also ends up being a doll's house. I think I placed down maybe like a toy box on the other side of the room and then I know I placed down this little chair and then I actually sized up this kind of like little like werewolf teddy that we got from the werewolves game pack and then I made it so it looks like the teddy bear was like sitting onto the chair but now as you can see I've now moved on into the last room which is the toddler's room so like I said I think I might actually come back like return back to this build at one point and then when we actually get the infant update I'll probably come in and change it so maybe there's like a, a changing table if we get one of them which I really hope we get like a changing table or maybe even just like a crib with this new infant update because just it would sims 2 it just gives me sims 2 I, I really miss like the crib system from the sims 2 and toddlers and like infants being able to stand at it and just i am really excited for the toddler update but in this room it ends up being quite quite simply decorated that ends up being the bed from eco lifestyle as well as the chest of drawers that ends up being like that big foot plushie in the corner and then there's a kind of like a little armchair for sims to come and read a toddler a bedtime story and then Apart from that, that is pretty much it. So I'm just gonna go around, furnish the rest of this room, add in some final like decorations. I think I added in some like nappies <laughs> and some like baby bottles, but that is pretty much it. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna end this voice over right here. So as always, you can download this build via the gallery. My gallery ID is JessicaPyYT, or you could search with the hashtag JessicaPyYT or just the hashtag JessicaPy. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedwording video. Bye guys.